So last night I did a brief live broadcast regarding trusts and their benefits and whether you should consider using them. Now we had a huge amount of feedback to that live broadcast. So what I actually wanted to do today is, rather than the brief video that I did last night, is actually spend a little bit more time and clarify a few of the points that I made, the benefits involved in trust, and also delve a little bit deeper. But before we get into talking about family trust and whether you should be considering using them to invest in property, let me introduce myself. So my name is Tim Guest, I'm Australia's leading financial educator and I've helped and trained over 18,000 everyday hardworking Australians how to live the life they really want. Now, of course, we'd love to see your interaction with these posts, so please comment, question, like, love, angry, and of course, most importantly, please make sure you share this valuable information with your friends and family. And of course, we regularly do these Just Ask Tim video series, so if you've got a question yourself, please make sure you post it in the comments below. Um, but look, here we go, we've got a question from Rob. This came in earlier in the week. Uh, he asked, should I be investing in property using a family trust? So look, Trusts are becoming more popular, however, there are a lot of things to consider. They can be a little bit complicated, so let's really dig into it and let's get started by firstly talking about exactly what a family trust is. This actually I got directly from the Australian Tax Office, right? So a trust is an obligation imposed on a person or other entity to hold property or other forms of assets for the benefit of the beneficiaries of those family trusts. Now, while in legal terms, a trust is not a, it's a relationship, it's not a separate legal entity. The reality is it's essentially considered like a separate legal entity, like a tax prayer entity for the purposes of tax administration. Okay, so why would people consider using a trust? Look, when you buy an investment property or when you're looking at buying even other forms of assets, the only ship, the structure that you can end up choosing can obviously have a significant benefit uh, on your own personal situation. So there's implications that you might need to consider regarding the amount of tax that you're gonna pay and other considerations regarding your overall financial situation. So trusts are becoming increasingly popular, uh, they're becoming an increasingly popular uh, uh, ownership structure for Australian pro property investors, in particular because of the tax benefits that they offer, the asset protection that they can also provide, and then the ease that it can provide when it comes to estate planning further on down the future as well. But there are a couple of different types of trusts. So let's break into and get into what are the different types of trusts out there. So uh, firstly, unit trusts. So in a unit trust, assets are owned by the trust and are split up into the portion, split up in portions known as units. Now these units you really can think of like shares that a shareholder might own in a company. You might own a bigger share than someone else, you might own a smaller share than another person. And then of course, depending on the share that you own uh, in that company, in that, uh, like that example, but of course, uh, depending on the units that you own in a unit trust, the uh, income and expenses that will be um, uh, split between the, the different holders of the, the trust will be correlated uh, according to the amount of units that they hold in that trust, okay? So you, like I said, an easier way to kind of reconcile it, think about it is, it's like owning shares in a company, all right? Now probably the most common form of trust is uh, often referred to as a family trust. Technically is actually referred to as a family discretionary trust. So this is what's most commonly used by uh, property investors. Now these uh, are normally set up to hold onto a family's assets, okay? It may even be set up for one person to hold onto assets and then utilize the family members as the beneficiary. Now, one of the reasons for why this is referred to as a discretionary trust as, and what sets it apart from a unit trust is it's the trustee, which is the person who then uh, controls the trust, uh, it's at the trustee's discretion in terms of how they're going to then um, proportion uh, things like the income and the expenses uh, that the assets inside of that family trust will incur. So it's up to their discretion. So this allows you to then, you know, people that may be on a higher tax bracket, you might uh, then distribute less of that income to a person like that. And of course, if you've got people in the family that are beneficiaries of the family trust that are on lower tax uh, brackets, it can allow you to distribute more of the income to those people. Obviously being on a lower tax bracket, they're gonna pay uh, a lesser amount of tax on that particular income. So this is one of the major benefits, the ability uh, for the trustee to use their discretion in terms of how they're gonna distribute the income from the, uh, the assets being held by that family trust. Third one, hybrid trust, essentially it's a combination. Okay, it's a combination of a unit trust and a family discretionary trust. It allows beneficiaries to hold units in the trust, however, the trustee still maintains the ability to distribute income um, at their discretion. 
So like I said, probably what I'm gonna talk a little bit more in more detail about now is the family trust because this is what's um, most commonly used by property investors, okay? So why would you consider using a trust? Well, there's three main benefits, the first being asset protection. So one of the main features of a trust structure is that the investment property or the assets that are held are in the trustee's name and not the person's name, okay? So in most cases, the trustee's assets are protected from creditors if, um, if that uh, person was to go bankrupt or if that person was the subject of legal action. Another thing that can be uh, uh, considered here is obviously if a person goes through a divorce, uh, rather than that person uh, owning those assets, they're essentially in the name of the trust. They are being held by the trust. Uh, so they can be uh, then come outside of those kinds of actions, all right? So significant amount of protection there that's provided by the, by the trust, okay? Next one is the tax benefits. So in terms of when you've got a discretionary trust and the trustee is then distributing income like I talked about before, um, it then allows you to distribute income to the people that are potentially gonna be on lower tax brackets, allowing you to take advantage of um, significant tax benefits. Um, the other thing that you can now, um, that can apply also with a, uh, with a uh, family trust is that uh, if you hold assets like an investment property, just like in a person, if you hold that, at, uh, that investment property in a person's name for more than 12 months, they still maintain the current 50% capital gains tax uh, discount, okay? So significant tax benefits there. Thirdly, in terms of estate planning, each trust, trust has a trustee, and this is a document which essentially features what happens in terms of um, the uh, beneficiaries or what happens to the uh, trustee, the instructions, if the trustee or those beneficiaries were to die. So this can just make uh, estate planning, you know, in the case of someone's death, a lot simpler uh, to sort out. Obviously, if anyone's been through that process, it can be pretty complicated, uh, particularly if there's no will in place, all right? But look, while these benefits all come into play, it doesn't necessarily mean that a trust is gonna be the best thing for a property investor to utilize. So there's things that you've gotta consider when determining whether this is actually gonna be the right ownership structure for you. First one being at transfer of your assets. So a lot of the time you've got an existing property investor who owns an existing investment property who thinks, great, I love the, uh, the, love the look of these benefits of this, uh, this trust, I wanna take advantage of those. So what I'll do is I'll transfer ownership of the investment property into the name of the trust. Of course, when you're gonna go through that trust, uh, that transfer process, uh, essentially what it involves is selling the asset from you personally into the name of the, the trustee or the, or the uh, family trust, which will then incur things like uh, stamp duty. Uh, and of course, if there's been some form of capital gain on that property, there'll also be capital gains tax, which will apply as well. So this is normally uh, f future thinking or looking at how you're gonna structure the ownership if you're looking at purchasing an investment property in the future, okay? Secondly, Tax losses, so trusts, while they allow you to distribute income, they don't allow you to effectively distribute the tax losses. So typically when most people are investing in property, most people are negatively gearing that investment. They're looking for a growth asset. Typically what you find a growth asset uh, involves, that asset is gonna cost you more than is being generated in terms of the income. A lot of the time, the tax benefit, the negative gearing benefits will neutralize, potentially it may, take that property from being negatively geared into being positively geared. However, if you're gonna own pro investment property uh, in the name of a trust, that trust probably doesn't have other income that those losses can be offset against. Now, this may be different if you're someone who is uh, starting a business or you're, if you're already self-employed, uh, that business essentially has no value, maybe you can transfer that business into the name of a family trust. Um, um, but one of the biggest benefits obviously with negative gearing is that you're essentially offsetting those losses against your own personal income. Typically because a trust doesn't have that income uh, from other sources, you're gonna lose that particular benefit. Now at the same time, in the future, as typically rents uh, increase over time, that property no doubt will become positively geared in the future and I know a lot of people think maybe what's better off to do is while I'm gonna lose those tax losses right now or that negative gearing benefit right now, I should be thinking about the future. However, one of the other things that most people consider when investing in property is that normally what you're trying to do is accumulate a large asset base as quickly as possible. So those tax losses are vital, okay? As an example for how I've set up my own personal investing, uh, the first 10 uh, properties that I purchased were all in my personal name, but right after my own personal tax. Uh, and then all the assets that I purchased since then have then been in the name of the family trust. So it may be a similar situation that you're looking for yourself. But of course, 
how do you know? The reality is, is that the rhino ownership structure is gonna be different for everyone. So how do you consider what's actually gonna be best for you? Well, the key is you really wanna be speaking to someone who's qualified, particularly someone like a, an accountant who can give you the right advice. Obviously, we've got accountants in our team, so if you need to know uh, what ownership structure is gonna be best for you moving forward, then definitely reach out to us and we can help you out. So guys, that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to cover off when it comes to trusts. Uh, look, we do have our, one of our Plan Your Way to Wealth workshops coming up next week. So if you're someone who's committed to living the kind of life that you really want to live and you want to learn how to navigate the minefield of misinformation, experts and options out there, uh, the next event, uh, next Tuesday in Perth, Tuesday the 19th of March, Technology Park in Bentley from 6.30 to 9.30, there'll be a link uh, in the um, post above so that uh, if you want to get some couple of free tickets, you can click on that and come and see what else I have to offer at one of those events. Guys, that's pretty much from me. Like I said, we love to see your interaction with these posts, so please like, love, angry question. If you've got a question that you want me to answer, uh, please put that in the comment box below. And please share, share, share this uh, valuable information with your friends and family. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will look forward to speaking to you again uh, tomorrow with our Week in Real Estate video series. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.